today we're going to continue our series um, through um, holy moments, and we're, we're looking at little snapshots of different events and things that happen in the Christmas story that can teach us something important and profound that can really change the way that we see Christmas and the way that we see others. <coughs> Excuse me. A few years ago, um, I was on an airplane. I was flying. I was going down to visit uh, some family in Florida, and, and I remember sitting next to a seatmate, and, and as I was sitting there, sometimes it's funny when you get on a plane, if you've ever been on one, sometimes the person you sit next to, earbuds go in, they want nothing to do with you the whole flight, right? It's, it's like that sometimes. But then sometimes the person sitting next to you, you can just have a great conversation. I know uh, through the years I've had some interesting ones. Um, one time I flew and I sat next to a woman that uh, worked for the Cincinnati Bengals. And so then I was asking her about all these different players, and she was giving me the lowdown on how they really were in real life, you know, and all that kind of stuff. By the way, go Bengals today. They play the Colts, all right? <laughs> all right, I've got the bully pulpit up here, so I can, I can say that. I, I just got daggers thrown at me here by some of you, but, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, sometimes when I've been on the plane, uh, like I said, I've had some really interesting conversations but one thing happened one time, and I've had this happen in other settings too. Um, as a pastor, sometimes you'll sit down and when you talk to somebody, they'll eventually get to that question. They'll say, so what do you do for a living? Right? Have you ever been asked that before? Like, right? Well, when they ask me, I know that I'm usually going to get two responses. Either one, the person that's sitting, uh, that asked me that is a believer themselves, and they're like, oh, that's awesome, and then we'll talk, you know, about faith and, and, and whatnot. And then there's usually another group when I say that, that's like, oh, that's nice, and the earbuds go in, and there's no more conversation, you know, the rest of the flight. Um, and, and I've seen that, not just on planes, but I've seen it in, in other settings. And, but one of the things that, that has really uh, challenged me in the past few years and I think back to some of those instances, is the moments where I hesitated, the moments where I didn't share more about my faith when I probably, not probably, when I should have. Uh, when I had an opportunity to talk about my faith, I hesitated. Now, sometimes the hesitation is because it was a total no, no thank you, I'm putting your buds in, want nothing to do with it. Not much I can do there. I guess I could force them, but then I'd probably end up in jail. All right? So, so I can't do that. But, but nonetheless, I mean, all of us have been in those situations where there's a little bit of hesitation when it comes to sharing our faith. And, and, and it happens in different places. Maybe you've been in a break room at, at work, and you start talking to somebody and want to know more about you, and, you sh and then it comes down to maybe faith at some point. Maybe it's even within your family at a dinner table. You know, this Christmas, there's going to be opportunities there where it, it, you could share your faith with people maybe that don't, don't follow Jesus. Um, but even at a coffee shop, you might sit down at a table and somebody else comes along and you have a conversation and, and inevitably it leads to your faith. See, these are truly divine appointments that God puts in our lives. He puts people into our lives in these different moments, and sometimes they're not expected. Like, you know, you go into a coffee shop, you're expecting to sit down and drink some coffee, but then this person comes in your life, or maybe at work, you think, I'm going to take a break, and then this person... These divine appointments God has put there, and, and the question is, are we going to hesitate when it comes to sharing our faith? And that's my question for us today, is what can happen when we hesitate? When we don't share our faith, when we don't talk about Jesus, we're going to look at, a, at an incident in the Christmas story that I think can challenge us and encourage us to, to not hesitate, even maybe when someone around, when that person that you're talking to might look down upon us. We're going to be in Luke chapter 2, I'm going to read verses 8 through 18, and we're going to look, and, and if you remember over the last few weeks, we've looked at Mary, we've looked at Joseph and the holy moments that, that they've been a part of, um, but today I want us to look at what happens after Jesus is born and we read about this other group that's involved in the Christmas story. We know about them, but there's something about their story that should encourage us. I'm going to be reading from the NIV and starting in verse 8, here's what it says. It says, and there were shepherds that were living out in the fields nearby who were watching their flocks at night. Now, anybody in here, anybody in here like shepherds? I know, I know a, an ex-shepherd, right? Yeah, Ken Rich was an ex-shepherd for many years. All right? Shepherds are, are a pretty cool group of people, all right? Now, let's keep reading here. Ken, you would agree, right? They're a pretty cool group. All right. 
Verse 9, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. For today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and he is the Messiah who is the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And then suddenly there was a great company of the heavenly host who appeared with the angel. And they were praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Now, now before I read any further, I, I want us to remember here again, and I mentioned this last week. Remember, there, were, there had been 400 years of silence from around the time of the Minor Prophets, which we're going through this year, right? The Minor Prophets, to the time of this annou- these announcements of these angels to Mary and Joseph, and now we read to the shepherds. And, and this great announcement is not an announcement, have you noticed that none of these announcements actually have been made to anybody that is powerful? You notice that? You have a young, probably 15, 14, 15, 16-year-old girl, Mary, Mary, you have Joseph, a carpenter, and now you have shepherds out in the middle of a field who these announcements are made to. Now, there's been a lot of discussion about these shepherds. We're not, we don't know a whole lot about them, so, there, so what I'm about to say is a little bit of conjecture, a little bit of uh, just kind of thought you know, that, that people have had through the years. But there are some people that think that these shepherds might have been what were called shepherd priests. Now, now hang in with, with me for a minute, because they weren't technically priests. But what their role was, was to care for the sheep in the fields that would later be sacrificed in the temple. Okay? So they had a connection with the temple. Now, now we may not realize this, but Bethlehem was only a few miles from Jerusalem. As a matter of fact, today, because of the population growth in Jerusalem, uh, many years ago when I went to Bethlehem, uh, you really, they really blend together. They're, they're really, they're, they're one big metro area, I guess you would call it in our terms. Uh, they all just kind of blend together. The only thing that does separate them is that Bethlehem is technically under, today is under Palestinian control. It's not under Israeli control. So you have to cross a border checkpoint when you go into Bethlehem. So these two towns, uh, one larger obviously, Jerusalem, than the other, they're fairly close to each other. So it would make sense that these sheep could be being raised so that they would later be used for sacrifice in the temple only a few miles away. Now, again, we don't know this for sure, but what we can know is that shepherds in this period of time had very little respect in their society. Shepherds were not highly respected. Why? Because for whatever reason, and I kind of dug around this week and I couldn't really find a a, a reason, but for whatever reason, shepherds were, they just had a bad rap. They just weren't trusted. They, they, people didn't feel like you could trust their word. As a matter of fact, shepherds often weren't allowed to testify in court. They were often accused of stealing and stolen or dealing in stolen property. Okay, these these were the kind of uh, this was the kind of reputation was thrown on shepherds. As a matter of fact, they were also considered ceremonial unclean, which meant that they were unworthy to worship in the temple. So, so you could argue that the shepherds were social outcasts. They, they weren't part of the, the normal, everyday operating people of society. They were kind of outcasts. And as a matter of fact, did you, this, I thought this was interesting. Parents would often teach their kids to walk on the opposite side of the road from a shepherd because they, you just couldn't trust them. That, that, that's the kind of reputation they had. So, when we think about this, who is it that God sends first the one angel and then the multitude of angels to? <laughs> he sends them to the outcasts. I mean, he sends them to two ordinary people in Nazareth and now a group of outcasts. And God, see, God chose to share his message with, with unpolished people, people that in that society would be considered unremarkable, uneducated even. That's who the message and the announcement came to. And then in verse 15, we hear from the angels. And, and what, did, what did the shepherds do after they hear from the angels? In verse 15, it says, When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And so they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. 
Now, I, I thought this was really, maybe you've never thought of this before, but did you notice that after the angels left, they didn't decide to have a committee meeting? <laughs> they didn't sit around and say, hey, you know what, what do you guys think about this? Like, should, I mean, what, what, maybe, you know what, maybe we shouldn't go. I mean, we've got to stay out here with the sheep, so maybe they could have found some excuses not to go. Maybe um, this is one that, that we as Christians like to do. Um, they didn't say, you know what, let's stop and pray about this first. You know, let's, let's stop and pray. And, okay, that, but that's, that's not what they do either. The scripture here says that they what? That they went. They didn't waste any time. They said, hey, we've got to go see this for ourselves. And the fact is, is that we need more of this in our lives. We need more of this in the church. We need more urgency in our lives. We, we need to remember, and I think sometimes we forget this. I, I don't want to say forget. We just don't think about it. Um, is Jesus could come back at any time. And if that's the truth, which it is, then we have to be more urgent in our faith. And so these men teach us the importance of urgency, that there are, that there are people, we have to remember that there are people in our world that don't know about Jesus. Travis mentioned earlier these cards that are on the seats. These are invitation cards. You can mail them. You can give them to someone. The time is coming, isn't it? Jesus could return at any time. Don't waste any time. These shepherds, they didn't hesitate. They didn't waste any time. And in verse 17, look what happens after they went and saw Jesus. It says that when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. So they heard the angels. They didn't waste any time. They go and they see Jesus for themselves. Once they see him, then they tell everybody about him. Now, now, let's stop here for a second, though. Let's, let's hit the brakes here a little bit, because we have to go back to what I shared a few minutes ago. Remember, shepherds were outcasts, weren't they? They were looked down on. But it says here in verse 17 that what? They spread the word to other people. They knew they were outcasts. They knew they were looked down upon. And yet, what did they do? They didn't care. They still went out and told people about Jesus. Now, sometimes as a follower of Jesus, we might feel that way a little bit. Maybe we might feel like people look down on us because of our faith, but that shouldn't stop us from sharing our faith. It didn't stop these shepherds from sharing their faith. Now, sure, there were probably some people as they went around telling them about Jesus, some people probably thought that they were lying. They, they probably thought, well, why would God give this message to shepherds? Come on. And sometimes that's the way people are going to respond to us, and we have to be okay with that. I mean, not okay in the sense that we're happy about it, we wish they would listen, but we have to be okay because we have to realize that it's our message, to sh it's, it's our responsibility and our goal to share. It doesn't necessarily mean that everybody is going to come to faith. And, and, and sometimes I think because of this, this fear, that's why we hesitate. That's why we hesitate to share our faith. And again, I want you to know today that you're not alone. All of us have been there. I've been there. We've all been in those situations where we're hesitant about sharing our faith. Sometimes it's because we don't want other people thinking that we're that obnoxious Christian uh, that's, that's talking about their faith. But remember that when you've been loved and changed by Jesus, when you've been transformed by him, you can't keep that to yourself. And obviously, these shepherds, with this angelic visit, this moment that they had with Jesus, and the, they were changed. They were transformed. Something was different in their lives, and they didn't want to keep that transformation in their life to themselves. They had to tell somebody else. And then look at verse 18. Look at some of the reaction, though, of some. And, and all who heard it, they were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Why were they amazed? Because these men, these shepherds, were not hesitant. They didn't hold back. They, they, they saw this message as one that was urgent, and they had to be bold about it. And as they shared that God had used this godly virgin woman to give birth to a, to a child and brought him into the world, only, only to announce it through these shepherds. Here, here's the thing, and th this is what I hope is an encouragement to you. What this tells me, is that none of us, nobody in this world, is beyond God's reach. Think about it. He's sharing this message through people that, if they weren't looked down upon, they definitely weren't of the powerful or the elite. 
What this shows us, all these announcements shows us, is that God, God loves all kinds of people. God loves you and me. We're not beyond God's reach. And you know what? He calls each of us to tell other people the same thing, that they are not beyond God's reach. You know what? There's a, maybe there's a new person that's in the office where you work, or maybe there's a family member that's not connected to Jesus. There's maybe somebody else in your life you know that's struggling through something. They need to know that they are not beyond God's reach. They need to know God's love. And so we can't hesitate. We can't hold back because they need to hear this message, just as we needed to hear it at an early point, earlier point in our life. You know, when I first moved here, um, there, was a, there was a family um, that was in our community, got connected with them through um, our kids. Our kids kind of hung out with their kids kind of thing. They did different things. And there were, there were several times that I spoke with them and I shared with them my faith. I told them, hey, it's, why don't you come to church or whatever. And you know, it was always a kind of a polite no, right? It was just, it, it was, I don't want to say it was even a verbal no. It was just kind of like, oh, okay, that's nice, you know, <laughs> kind of that thing. And, um, and, I, and I invited them several times, and, and I figured, okay, they know. And they know that, that I'd love for them to come. And, and so some time went along, and obviously kids grow up and whatnot. And, and I'll never forget, though, sometime later, I heard, or actually I was, I was on a bus, and I saw one of them reading Purpose Driven Life. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. Um, and so later I, I talked to them and found out that they were attending church. And I was super excited. It wasn't my church. I didn't care about that. I was excited that they were attending church. And, and actually here just a few weeks ago when we had our Christmas celebration, I talked with one of them. And it is so amazing to see the work that God's doing in their life. How their life has been radically changed and transformed. Obviously, I, it wasn't, uh, I wasn't the one that, that was a part of the process toward the, toward the end of their faith journey of coming to faith. But I like to believe I was a part of it in the beginning. And, obvious, and every time I would go by their house, I would pray for them. See, that, that, that's what we need to do more of in our lives. We can't be hesitant. We can't, be, uh, we can't hold back. This message that we have is way too important to keep to ourselves. I mean, think about it. Here we have these shepherds. We have Mary and Joseph. Because of their boldness and because of their willingness to listen to God's call in their lives... We're still talking about them 2,000 years later. That's why we're talking about We're talking about them because they weren't hesitant. Because they didn't hold back. Because they weren't afraid. So here's the message that we need to share without hesitation and with boldness. And that is that God reached down so that we could be lifted up. See, that is what our world needs to hear. See, God doesn't care about where you're at right now, because if that was the problem, if he did, did care about where you're at right now, he would have never came to begin with. No, he came down to lift you out of the mess that you are in in your life. All of us have it. All of us have broken hearts. We have broken relationships. We have a broken, there's a part of our story that is broken. God came to redeem that story and to reclaim us. That is what the story of Christmas is about. And that's why we can't be hesitant about it. Because see, God took our sin so we could take His righteousness. Not, not only did God come down and, and involve Himself in our mess, He came down to fix that mess. See, Jesus died so that you can be like Him. Not on your own, but through the cross. Because see, here, here's something else. God was born into poverty so that we could experience his riches. Have you ever thought of that before? I mean, think of the family he was born into and the situation he was born into. He lived a very impoverished life. But instead, he has given us his riches. See, Jesus, Jesus surrendered it all. The riches, the power, the might of being in heaven to be here in our mess. And he, and he announced this not through royalty. He announced it through shepherds, who are outcasts in a field. He wanted, see, Jesus wanted the, to know, the world to know that no one is too far from God's reach. No one is too low for God's love. No sin is too great for God's grace. See, remember, that, remember this, is that God often chooses the unlikely to do the extraordinary. 
I mean, that's a recurring theme over and over throughout the scripture. And so I, I think this should be an encouragement to us because we may, I, I know I feel this way, I'm sure you do too, you might feel unlikely. You might feel like an unlikely person that God would use. That's the kind of person, peop, that's per, that's the kind of person God uses. <laughs> he wants to use you. He wants to use someone who is unlikely. And if you are a, a disciple, if you are a follower of Jesus, I want to challenge you to share that love that you have in your life. And I don't know that there's a better time. I, I think this time of year is a great time for us to share our faith. But it's going to come down to this to this truth and this understanding that we can't be hesitant. And so it comes back to the question I started with this morning. What can happen when we hesitate? Well, the truth is, is that a person can miss out on eternity with Jesus. That's what happens when we hesitate. And so I want you to truly think this over this week. I, I mentioned to you again, there are cards that are there, maybe something you can easily hand out. But I want to invite you today to think of someone who needs to know about Jesus and not to hesitate. Let's, let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and I'm going to ask you a few questions as we pray together here in a moment. Here's the first question. Who is someone looking for God in my life that I have hesitated about talking to them about him? Again, it could, be, it could even be one of your children. It could be a, a family member, a co-worker. I want you to think of somebody right now. Who is that person that you've hesitated on? Okay, now let, let's think, now let's kind of think of this a little bit differently. Here's another one, another question. What past conversations do I need to revisit and share Jesus? I want you to think back to maybe a moment when somebody, you might have seen an opening there, but you didn't take that opening to share Christ. Maybe you need to go back and revisit that conversation. Who is someone or where was that, that that happened? And then finally, when we share our faith, one of the things I've realized even in my own life is, is that it's our own insecurity. So what part, of me needs to, what part of me needs to be overcome to share my faith more? Again, maybe it's a fear of rejection. Maybe it's an insecurity about myself. Maybe it's thinking that it all falls on me and not on the work of the Holy Spirit. What is it that's holding you back? And, and how can you move past that? Allow God to take that away from you. See, the thing is, is, if we keep walking away, we're always going to wonder. We're always going to wonder what could have been. You can, you can open your eyes. You know what? See, <clears throat> our world, our world needs a Savior. And our Savior is here, and that's Jesus. And we have him, so let's not hesitate. You know what? There are a lot of people that are struggling through depression. They need to know that Jesus is here for them. That they don't have to walk through that alone. Maybe some, some of us in here are online today. Maybe it's your finances that are really shaky. You need to know that Jesus is your Savior. Maybe you're fighting through an addiction in your life. You need to know that Jesus is bigger than any addiction in your life. What I want to challenge you to do is to tell your sin, to tell your shame, to tell your, your sorrow... It needs to know that a Savior is here. Because the thing is, is that all of us, all of us in here, all of us, we all have stuff, but thankfully we have a Savior. So let's not hesitate to show them His love.